It's worth being exhausted all the time. But the more people I influence and impact, the, the better chance it is that I've impacted that one person that I was made to impact. We're really small. We're so insignificant. I, I don't really know exactly what I'm chasing. It's still really hard to figure out what my purpose is. I'll always be looking for my purpose. We have less than 4,000 likes on Facebook. I say that because it's interesting that anyone I've talked to who's, who's kind of, I've viewed as being professional or having some sort of knowing what they're talking about when it comes to the music industry. They actually use Facebook. Like, they use how many people have liked you on Facebook. I think more than ever, I'm, I'm sure that this band, 21 Pilots, is, is gonna be a grassroots type of band. I'm, I'm ready to start it up from, the, from nothing. Let's review this train of thought. Tyler's being told by music industry people that they use likes on Facebook. Tyler says, we have less than 4,000 and it's implied that that's not adequate. They're not gonna get help from the industry where they're at right now. And they didn't. Two pilots, a local band, doing it themselves, and what happened was, you got signed to Fuel by Rock. Nine thousand seven hundred and sixty-five. Turns out it doesn't take a million likes to get the music industry's attention. When My purpose? Your, yeah, your purpose. Or is, or is it still up in the air? It's like what? What's what's success? That's my question. It's like what is success? Yeah, is it? For me and most people, I think that it's all about numbers. It's like if I if I make this much money, or if I get in front of this many people, if I play this many shows, or if I you know, it's a, a numbers thing. Tyler both chases and is very defiant against those numbers. He sees the challenge, but also very much questions the terms. And his idea of success or failure is pretty absolute. It's a very binary way of thinking. In fact, right after I wrote that, I found this quote from 2013 Alt Press. The easiest way to put it is the album I have out right now is either one of two things, and it's only one of two things. And he goes on to say Vessel is either the best thing he's ever heard or the worst thing he's ever done. So on the one hand, you're either good and successful, and it seems like the other option is abject worthlessness. We're nothing. We're a little nothing band right now. Hammer into you that you're worthless. I didn't accomplish anything today, and I'm I'm worthless. Of that thing that's constantly trying to hammer into your head that you're worth nothing. When you're when your band is nothing, pounding away saying that I'm worth nothing. That's a whole lot of nothing. Tyler is talking about both their significance as a band and his worth as a person, as though they're things that can be quantified. Like you're either something or you're nothing. Let's talk about an alternative view of nothing. In June of 2012, when the band go to California to record their first album vessel, they each get tattoos. The one that Tyler gets includes this symbol, the null sign. So I hit up a friend of mine who is a mathematician to ask what the null sign is. And the null sign is a symbol used by the Borbaki group that means an empty set. A set of things that contains no things. A list with nothing on it. So I ask, do you think here it represents something that can't be quantified? Because that's pretty on brand for this band. Indefinable is pretty much who they are. And she says, almost the opposite. It's assigning a quantity to nothingness. Sets are defined basically as collections of things. The null set is kind of wild because is a collection with nothing in it still a collection? Yes, claims the null set. And more than that, stay with me now, there's more than one kind of nothing. Put some apples on a scale. Weigh the apples. Congratulations, you got three apples. You have a set of apples. Don't put anything on the scale. You have an empty set. Now what if we put some helium gas on the scale? 
Helium is lighter than air. It's not gonna weigh anything, but it's still something. You have a null set. Helium isn't nothing. It's just nothing in the context of apples. In measurement theory, a null set is a set that can't be measured by the means by which you're trying to measure it. What if the value of a band is how many likes they have on Facebook? If they have less than a certain number, are they nothing? What if what Tyler has to offer the world is not what the world values? Now obviously, we just don't know whether Tyler meant an empty set by this, or something that's not really empty, or something else entirely. It's, it's not our tattoo. But the null sign does get incorporated into the branding from blurry face onward. And branding is meant to convey something. Maybe there are designers out there in the world who will just make a logo that looks nice because it looks nice. Brandon Reich is not one of those people. And incidentally, you can learn a lot about the mindset of how he works and the kind of graphics he's made for the band if you go listen to his podcast, which I super recommend. But back to the null sign. I think we can learn something about this from the first time we saw this symbol used. July 2013 on Instagram. Now for context, that's a year and a half after this and one month before this interview. Pounding away saying that I'm worth nothing. So these ideas about worth and nothingness are still very current at the time of him posting this. And the word that he uses, the first one replacing the O with the null sign, is local. And that's a hell of a word to choose, to inject with the idea of nothingness. And it encapsulates the frustration of local being like the worst thing you can be as a band. The whole show is double booked, so we went from three bands to nine bands. Welcome to uh, the underground local music of the United States. Playing shows consists of one emotion, and it is trying your hardest not to get screwed. Like, be a pop band, be a punk band, but don't be a local band. That's the worst. You can tell this is a word with complicated feelings for them, because even by the time they get signed, they're what? Regional, at best? The rest of the caption, though, that tells a different story. When writing your band name on the wall gave you everything you needed to be fearless. It's like he's taking that nothingness and embracing it. He's reclaiming it. It's like he's fueled by that challenge of being thought of as worthless. So one year from the date of this post, there's going to be a meeting where the look and feel and branding of Blurryface will be decided. It's been really easy to keep this brand consistent only because we did so much work and we were so adamant about it early that it made the rest. I mean, that was two years ago almost. And mm -hmm. two years ago, we pretty much established the stuff that we're going to make now. Like, Yeah, it translates everywhere. I mean, even the production manager, Daniel, he pulled me aside and he's like, hey, like, what what font should we use on these backstage documents? Like the the scheduling up on the walls. Futura you know? medium with like 400 kerning. That's <laughs> yeah. the answer. We need to spend <laughs> so much money on paper because... And if there's an O in it, put a line through the O, okay? Which I showed you the shortcut, <laughs> finally. Yeah, finally, my bad. I was, uh, what is it, shift option O? There yeah, you go. So, oh, yeah. So they're talking about put a line through the O and we've had this branding sorted out for almost two years. That meeting with all the hard work they're talking about, that's gotta be summer 2014. Because fall, as soon as that hits, the band is back on tour with Quiet is Violent. And then in December, they hit the studio for two months recording Blurry Face. Time flies, man. Why am I telling you this? Because, well, recording the album obviously means recording the song Doubt as well, which includes the lyrics, gnawing on the bishops, claw away up their system. So this is one short year after that first use of the null sign, talking about these oppressive bishops. What are the chances that he did not yet know what the Borbaki group was? Very little, I think. And that pretty much brings us right back to here. The blurry face is a character, a guy that um, I like to say I met in a different dimension. You know, I kind of came up with a, a backstory to him and a name and um, what he's like. And that pretty much brings us up to speed. 